Hey, I really appreciate you cruising by for my daily devotions. It is Thursday, January 18th, 2024. We're going to look at Colossians chapter 4, Acts chapter 5, uh, Psalm 17, and Deuteronomy chapter 13. Yesterday we read the fourth chapter of Acts, and it's where Peter and John get drugged before the Sanhedrin. Their lives are threatened. They're beaten. And uh, they're, they're told, do not run around in the temple, you know, preaching this Jesus guy and the resurrection from the dead. And uh, in verses 27, they are, they're released. And in verse 27 through 30, I want to just read those verses. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you, anoint, uh, whom you anointed. There is a prayer. They did what what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. In other words, they crucified Jesus. That was God's plan to take care of our sin. Now, Lord, consider their threats. You know, they're threatened. We're, we're going to kill these guys if they run around preaching Jesus. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. They just told, if you run around preaching about this Jesus guy, we're going we're gonna to beat you up again, maybe even kill you. So now what do they pray? Lord, help us speak the word with boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform miraculous signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. We need a dose of that boldness today. Where does it come for it from? You pray for it. You pray for it. That's what I try to do on this channel is to speak the word of God boldly. Colossians chapter, in fact, I just recorded three prayer videos and uh, and six short Bible thoughts, and now I'm going through this stuff. And, and you know, one of the things that comes back to me over and over again, I teach the Bible in some manner every day, seven days a week. I love that, I, it's, it's the center of my life. But you know what? I get much more than I ever give away. It, it always comes back to me multiplied. It's an amazing thing how that works. Let's pray. Father, speak to us today. Pray that you change our lives by what we hear. Make a difference. Speak to me, Father, and then speak to other people as we read the word. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Colossians chapter 4. This is the last chapter of Colossians, which is a power. I think it's the last chapter. I should know that. It is. Four chapters in Colossians is a powerful book. One of these days I'm going to have to teach through the whole thing, verse by verse, you know, with specificity or whatever. Colossians chapter 4. Masters, provide your slaves with what is right and fair, because you know that you also have a master in heaven. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Pray for us, too, that God may open a door for our message, so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ, for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation always be, be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Tychicus will tell you all the news about me. He is a dear brother, a faithful minister, and fellow servant of the Lord. I am sending him to you for the express purpose that you may know about our circumstances, and that he may encourage your hearts. He is coming with Onesimus, our faithful and dear brother, who is one of you. They will tell you everything that is happening here. My fellow prisoner Aristarchus sends you his greetings, as does Mark, the cousin of Barnabas. That's probably the dude that wrote the Gospel of Mark, okay? You've received instructions about him. If he comes to you, welcome him. Jesus, who is called Justice, also sends greetings. These are the only Jews among my fellow workers for the kingdom of God, and they have proved a comfort to me. Epaphras, who is one of you and a servant of Christ Jesus, sends greetings. He is always wrestling in prayer for you, that you may stand firm in all the will of God, mature and fully assured. I vouch for him that he is working hard for you and for those in Laodicea and Hierapolis. Our dear friend Luke, the doctor, wrote the Gospel of Luke and the the, uh, the the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts, okay? The doctor and Demas send greetings. My greetings to the brothers at Laodicea and to Nympha and the church in her house. 
Most of their churches met in homes in those days. They didn't have church buildings. After this letter has been read to you, see that it also is read to the church in Laodice, of, the, of the Laodiceans, and that you in turn read the letter from Laodicea. We don't have that letter. It would be nice if we did, but we don't. Tell Archippus, see to it, that you complete the work you've received in the Lord. I, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand. Remember my chains. Grace be with you. He was in, in jail. Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Now a man named Ananias, together with his wife Sapphira, also sold a piece of property. They had just seen Barnabas sell some property and give the money, the proceeds to the saints. Okay, With his wife's full knowledge, he kept back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think that do, of doing such a thing? You've not lied to men, but to God. He was faking spirituality. He kept some of the money for himself. That's okay, but don't act like you gave the whole thing to God. Don't fake spirituality. That's what he was doing. When, when Ananias heard this, he fell down and died. And great fear seized all who heard what had happened. Then the young man came forward, wrapped, wrapped up his body and carried him out and buried him. About three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, tell me, is this the price you and Ananias got for the land? Yes, she said, that is the price. Peter said to her, how could you agree to test the spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out also. At that moment, she fell down at his feet and died. Then the young men came in, finding her dead, carried her out, and buried her beside her husband. Great fear seized the whole church and all who heard about these events. What did they do wrong? They were faking spirituality. They were faking sacrifice, but it wasn't real. They didn't have to give the money, but they were faking it like they, they gave the whole thing. They were lying to the Holy Spirit. It's not a good thing. The apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders among the people. And all the believers used to meet together in Solomon's colonnade. That's a place in the temple. No one else dared to join them, even though they were highly regarded by the people. Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. The church grew. That's what's supposed to happen. As a result, people brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. Crowds gathered also from towns around Jerusalem bringing their sick and those tormented by evil spirits, and all of them were healed. Then the high priest and all his associates, who were members of the party of the Sadducees, were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Go stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people the full message of this life. At daybreak, they entered the temple courts, as they had been told, and began to teach the people. When the high priest and his associates arrived, they called together the Sanhedrin, the full assembly of the elders of Israel, and sent to the jail for the apostles. But on arriving at the jail, the officers did not find them there, so they went back and reported. We found the jail securely locked and the guards standing at the doors, but when we opened them, we found no one inside. On hearing, this, the, on hearing this report, the captain of the temple guard and the chief peace, priests were puzzled and wondered what would come of this. Then someone came and said, look, the men you put in jail are standing in the temple courts teaching the people. Imagine that. At that, the captain went with his officers and brought the apostles, but he did not use force because he feared that the people would stone them. Having brought the apostles, they made them appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are de determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than men. No kidding. That's what we all need to do. Okay. The God of our fathers raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him to his own right hand 
as prince and savior that he might give repent that he might give repentance and forgiveness of sins to Israel. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were furious and wanted to put them to death. But a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, who was honored by all the people, stood up in the Sanhedrin and ordered that the men be put outside for a little while. Then he addressed them, Men of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do to these men. Some time ago, Thutis appeared claiming to be somebody, and about 400 men rallied to him. He was killed, and his followers dispersed, and it all came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean appeared in the days of the census and led a band of people in revolt. He too was killed, and all his followers were scattered. Therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone. Let them go, for if their purpose or activity is hum of human origin, it will fail. Listen to this. This dude was smart, okay? But if, it, it, but if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men you will only find yourselves fighting against God. Wow, smart, smart dude. His speech persuaded them. They called the apostles in, had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. The apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Day after day in the temple courts from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ. He's the Messiah. That means that. That's what that means. The only way to get back into a relationship with God and get off this planet alive and go to heaven, you know, the only way. Psalm 17. Psalm 17. Another of these great Psalms of David. Hear, O Lord, my righteous plea. Listen to my cry. Give ear to my, my prayer. It does not rise, to, rise from deceitful lips. My, may my vindication come from you. May your eyes see what is right. Though you probe my heart and examine me at night, though you test me, you, find, you will find nothing. I have resolved that my mouth will not sin. As for the deeds of men, by the words of your lips, I have kept myself from the ways of the violent. My steps have held to your paths. My feet have not slipped. I call on you, O God, for you will answer me. Give ear to me and hear my prayer. Show the wonder of your great love, you who save by, by your right hand those who take refuge in you from their foes. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. From the wicked who assail me, from my mortal enemies who surround me, they close up their callous hearts and their mouths speak with arrogance. They have tracked me down. They now surround me with eyes alert to throw me to the ground. They are like a lion hungry for prey, like a great lion crouching in cover. Rise up, O Lord, confront them, bring them down, rescue me from the wicked by your sword. O Lord, by your hand, save me from such men, from men of this world whose reward is in this life. You still hunger, uh, you still the hunger of those who you cherish. Their sons have plenty, and they store up wealth for their children. And I, in righteousness, I will see your face. When I awake, I will be satisfied with seeing your likeness. Deuteronomy chapter 13. Deuteronomy chapter 13. Let's just tr try to decide how there's 34 chapters in Deut Deuteronomy. So we got a ways to go, but you know what? Just going to read the word of God every day, get the full counsel of the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 13. There's always word from God, and we're going to listen to it every day. 13th chapter of Deuteronomy. If a prophet or one who foretells by dreams appears among you and announces to you miraculous, a miraculous sign of wonder, and if the sign or wonder of which he has spoken takes place, and, and he says, let us follow other gods, gods you have not known, and let us worship them, 
you must not listen to the words of the prophet or, or dreamer. The Lord your God is testing you to find out whether you love him with all your heart and with all your soul. In other words, just because someone does a miracle doesn't mean he has a God you should worship. The only God you should worship is the Lord. Miracles fake people out all the time. Be, be careful of that. It is the Lord your God you must follow and him you must revere. Keep his commands and obey him, serve him and hold fast to him. That prophet or dreamer must be put to death because he preached rebellion against the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt and redeemed you from the land of slavery. He has tried to turn you from the way of the Lord your God commanded you to follow. You must purge the evil from among you. If your very own brother or your son or daughter or wife you love or your closest friend secretly entices you saying, let us go and worship other gods, gods that neither you nor your fathers have known, gods of the peoples around. That's the little g on this word God or gods, whether near or far from one end of the land to the other. Do not yield to him or listen to him. Show him no pity. Do not spare him or shield him. You must certainly put him to death. Your hand must be first in putting him to death and then the hands of all the people stone him to death because he tried to turn you away from the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt out of the land of slavery then all Israel will will hear and be afraid and no one among you will do such an evil thing again if you hear it said that one of the towns of the Lord your God is giving you to live in if you hear it said about one of the towns the Lord your God is giving you to live in that wicked men have arisen among you and have led the people to their uh, in their of their town astray, saying, "Let us go and worship other gods, gods you have not known." Then you must inquire, probe, and investigate it thoroughly. And if it is true and it has been proved that this detestable thing has been done among you, you must certainly put to the sword all who live in that town, destroy it completely, both its people and its livestock. Gather all the plunder of the town into the middle of the public square and completely burn the town and all its plunder as a whole burnt offering to the Lord your God. It is to remain a ruin forever, never to be rebuilt. None of those condemned things shall be found in your hands, so that the Lord will turn from his fierce anger and will show you mercy. Have, have compassion on you and increase your numbers, as he promised on oath to your forefathers, because you obey the Lord your God, keeping all his commandments, all his commands, that I'm giving you today and doing what is right in his eyes. You know why we don't have those laws that apply to us today? You know, you don't, we don't kill people who worship another God. The reason we don't is because Jesus took responsibility for all that sin by dying on the cross for us. It's not our responsibility to pay for it if we come to Jesus, okay? But they were under the law. And they live by the law. You paid the price if you broke the law. But Jesus fulfilled the law. And he paid our price and set us free from the law. That's why we don't have to worry about those things today. Come to Jesus. He paid the price for all your sin. And it's all gone. And you need not worry about it at all. Surrender to Christ as Lord and Savior. And he's covered all that stuff. Wow. Wow. Let's pray. Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the truth we find in your word. Thanks for speaking to us. Change us, Father, into your people from the inside out, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.